This is my tough guy face, my campus security look. I ain't playing. Don't be messing. <laughs> if you know me, you know I'm not a tough guy. I'm just not. But sometimes as a pastor, I have to take on the role of what I call campus security. So let me kind of explain what I mean there. Here in uh, Kentucky, our church campus sits kind of up on a hill, kind of behind some other businesses. A lot of people don't even know we're up here. Uh, we're right between commercial and residential. And uh, we have a daycare that runs out of our building. And so we have to really take care of and look out for and protect our campus and our building and, and the kids in our, our daycare. So Monday through Friday, I'm the only man on the campus most of the time. Uh, all the uh, daycare employees are female. My secretary's female. Uh, Aaron, our worship uh, pastor, he's part-time, so uh, he's not even in every day of the week. And, and when he is, he's only in for uh, the mornings. And so uh, being the only guy up here, I kind of have to take on that role of campus security. But it, it goes beyond Monday through Friday, beyond the business week, and, and uh, goes into the evenings, and it goes definitely on Sunday mornings. So some of what I'm talking about is like just shutting down the building at the end of the day. Uh, because we have a daycare, we're on lockdown. And so our building is completely locked. And so if you want to get in to come see me, you got business at the church, uh, you need to call ahead, let us know, or you need to knock on the door or ring the doorbell because we are locked down because we do have kids on the campus. And that means when I leave, whether it's Monday through Friday or if I'm the last one out in the evening or if I am the last one out on Sunday, I have to shut the building down. And so that's turning out lights, uh, turn down thermostats, and definitely doing door pulls, uh, making sure that our doors are latched and locked and, and shut for the, the rest of the day. You don't want to have a door that was uh, left propped open or maybe the crash bar didn't uh, work and it, it kind of drug and, and didn't shut, or maybe somebody unlocked it and forgot to lock it back. You don't want those things to happen because then anybody can get in your building and, uh, you know, they can trash your building, they can steal stuff, they can break stuff, whatever. Um, that happened to us when I lived in Ohio. It's like one o'clock in the morning. I get a phone call from the local police department and they said, hey, pastor, we're just doing some routine door pulls on businesses. We pulled your, your door on your church and it's unlocked and you need to come over and, and uh, lock your building. And so I got over there and they did not let me in the building because they had some officers who were sweeping the building to make sure that nobody was in there. And thankfully, nobody had, had discovered the unlocked doors so nobody was in the building and it turned out just, just fine. Um, there was another time here in Moorhead and a, a, a man on some drugs was going down the highway in the wrong direction, caused several automobile accidents, got off at the exit that is just kind of at, down at the end of, of, of where our church is and running from police and, and came up our way and actually parked and ditched his car amongst our, our uh, daycare workers and, and then fled. The police chief calls me up and says, hey, pastor, are you in the building? I said, yes, sir. He said, uh, you know, I need you to do something for me, explain the situation. <clears throat> and then I had to go do interior door, door pulls so that meant I had to make sure that all of our doors were, were locked. I had to sweep the building, uh, both the church side, the gym, and, and then go over to the school side as the police swept the outside perimeter. Uh, they, they felt that he did not come into the building, uh, that he had fled on foot, and, and that was the case. Uh, they found him over in the neighborhood uh, hiding. But again, uh, because our, our church was locked down, that helped to protect us. We, we have a 14 acre campus here, uh, a big parking lot. We have some woods, we have a big field, we have this beautiful row of pines. And so there's a lot of places that people like to come up. Uh, they like to park and uh, just enjoy uh, the shade. 
Um, they like to come up here when it's nice weather, use our pavilion, sit and have lunch. The neighborhood uses our playground. They use our, our parking lot to, to ride bikes or hoverboards or skateboards. And, and, and we're trying to find that balance to be your neighborhood church. And we want the neighbors on our campus. We want, you know, county and city workers in our pavilion on their lunch hour, eating their lunch. We want, uh, you know, our officers to be able to sit in the shade or knock on the door and ask for a cup of coffee or, or whatever. But the balance is uh, allowing those things to happen and keeping the negative and the bad off of the campus. And again, because we're kind of up on a hill and, and, and we're a great place that you can kind of get away, uh, we sometimes find cars in our parking lot that shouldn't be here. And so as the pastor who's here all the time, I know which cars should be on the, the campus and, and which cars um, are strange or new or different. And so when I see a car, especially like a car parked over in the corner of the parking lot or they took the little road back to the woods, I have to go and investigate that. And, and and most of the time, it's somebody here doing something they shouldn't be doing. And so I have to explain to them, hey, it's private property. Um, you know, you can't be doing that. You, you need to go. Um, some of the things that I've discovered doing uh, perimeter checks, perimeter checks really of the parking lot and then sometimes of our, our whole campus, um, drug paraphernalia, uh, people come up here and, and get high and do their drugs. And a lot of times that's in the form of uh, syringes and needles, which then I have to clean that up, pick that up, dispose of that properly because that's a, a health risk to our people. Um, use condoms, people come up here and, 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 and uh, you know have sexual activities going on. And again, that becomes a health risk and that needs to be cleaned up and disposed of. Uh, I've actually come onto uh, a church campus uh, first person uh, during the work week uh, that day and discovered a big pile of human feces in the parking lot. Again, that becomes a, a health issue and that has to be taken care of. During the day, um, I can just kind of look out in the parking lot and see activity. And so when there's a car that, that I kind of feel maybe shouldn't be here, they're parked funny, you know, I, I'll go out and, and investigate and, you know, walk up, introduce who I am, and, you know, if they're just enjoying the shade, they're eating their lunch, you know, I tell them, hey, you're more than welcome to do that. You know, enjoy the afternoon. Uh, but sometimes I go and, and they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. Um, and nine times out of ten, that's a, a sexual activity, uh, whether it's teenagers or, you know, adults. And, uh, you know, I have to inform them that you can't be doing that here and this is private property and you need to leave and, and uh, it, it's funny, they always get attitude with me. They always, you know, well, it's not posted private property and do you own this place? And, you know, we weren't doing anything. And, you know, one time I walked up on a car and, uh, you know, the people sitting in the back seat and I said, you know, uh, hey, I'm the pastor here, you know, everything okay? And they're like, well, we're just talking. I said, talking in the back seat, why aren't you talking in the front seat? And, you know, the guy cocked some attitude with me. And uh, I just told him, I said, well, I think it's best that you leave. And uh, when he got out, he had to pull his pants up. So I said, well, I see you talk with your pants down, which made him mad. And but I informed them, you can't be here doing that. And this is private property. And and one of my benefits is, you know, if they, if they want to really get attitude and, and try and start something, I just informed them that the sheriff attends my church and I can call him and he can come over and deal with the situation. And that resolves uh, the issue. One of the things that I do, um, all three churches I've been with were smaller churches in small towns. And so I've always made it a habit. When I'm close to the church, I just cruise through the parking lot. And so when Rhonda and I are in town, especially in the evenings, uh, we'll cruise through the parking lot. And uh, usually at night, there's a car here or there's a semi truck parked here. You know, there's something going on and I have to, you know, chase them off the property, let them know it's, it's dark, it's late, it's after hours, private property and, and get them off of the property. Um, that's just something that I do. Uh, you know, if, if you feel you're over your head, if you feel like, hey, this is something I really don't want to deal with, you just call the local police and they, they can come deal with it. Um, I've started to build that reputation that this is not a good place to be if you're going to be doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. 
And so the, the after hours traffic, uh, the sex traffic, the drug traffic is really cut down. I think just because word of mouth, people are saying, hey, we got busted up there. And you know, that, that guy's not letting you be up there and it's not a good place to be because we get caught and the police presence is there. Um, so those things are what I call campus security. Uh, I, I, I really am trying to protect not only our property because we have this big, beautiful building, we have this big, beautiful campus and it is a financial investment we need to protect, but to keep it safe, safe for our church people and safe for our neighborhood who can come over and, and enjoy our property. Um, this may or may not be something that you really dive into. You know, you may have uh, other people in the church who watch over it. You may be uh, the one who, who calls the police and that's completely fine, but at least be the eyes and the ears of what's happening, your building and your campus and your property to, to help protect that and have a good working relationship with your law enforcement so that they, uh, they know what's going on. Hey, I'm just uh, informing you some of the craziness that happens on, on church property so that you can do ministry with eyes wide open. Hey, have a great day.